Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 201, and uh, we're back with more action from the Lodge Monster Meetup Week. Very excited to share it with you guys. Actually, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straightforward with you. This isn't the most exciting one out of uh, this series of videos from the Lodge, but it gets more and more exciting as it goes on, so be sure to watch it all the way through. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're back at the Lodge for day two of Monster Meetup Week. Today, we're playing what was billed as the biggest meetup game in Texas history. I was somewhat concerned about calling it that, but we smashed the previous record number of tables, though I don't know what the previous record actually was. All I know is there's a new one since people show up from all over the country, including this guy here with his Revenge Range t-shirt and meetup game legend, Ryan Stafford. You see him there in the red. He's been to more meetup game locations than anyone else, including the one that we did in London. Altogether, we get a staggering 18 2 5 tables going, pretty incredible turnout. I buy in for one of the leftover chips that I had from the night before, but I got roasted for $12,000 in this dreamed game. Everyone thinks that I lost over $20,000 in that session, since they didn't see me win the $25,000 pot after the stream ended. It's really fun for me to relive the carnage and discuss it with all the people that watched it last night and are here today. I make my way over to the first table hoping that things can go a little bit better this session. We begin at 244. About 20 minutes in, I pick up Pocket Kings under the gun, I raise the 20. The cutoff is the only color, we're heads up out of position, the flop comes King Jack 7 with two diamonds, we've got top set, what a feeling this is. I bet 20 for value, the cutoff isn't afraid even though he should be. He calls, the turn is the 5 of spades, we still have the nuts. Since we have all the kings, the opponent likely has a draw or just doesn't believe that I've got it, I bet 50 to punish him. The cutoff loves pain, he makes the call. The river is the queen of clubs, the flush draw misses, but some unlikely straights get there. I'm not worried, I bet 165 to hopefully get me closer to the even mark for this trip. The opponent immediately folds, he likely had diamonds and bricked. Much like Nicolas Cage's taxes, we don't get paid, still, it's nice to make a big hand, then at least get two streets of value. Next we've got king 9 suited in the big blind, under the gun limps in, the hijack raises to 15. I call. Under the gun calls, we're going three ways to the flop out of position. It comes king 9 8 with two hearts. We've got top two pair. I check. No one behind me bites. The opponents both check back. The turn is the deuce of diamonds. There are two flush draws out there and some straight draws. I check if I could trust my opponents to put money in the pot, but they've already proven to be unreliable. I bet 45. It's about a pot size bet. Under the gun folds. The hijack saw me bluff shove for piles with seven deuce the night before. He calls. It's down to heads up. The river is the seven of spades. The only plausible hand that really gets there is jack 10, and it's pretty unlikely that I'm up against that. I make it 130. The opponent called a big bet on the turn. Maybe he'll call another big one here. After tanking for 40 seconds, the hijack folds. We're making some big hands. We're just not able to fully capitalize in these situations though. We go card dead for over an hour when we pick up queen nine of hearts in the hijack at the third table. Under the gun raises to 15. I make a loose call to get in the action and tangle with some viewers. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, we're going four ways to the flop, it comes 8-6-4 with two hearts. It checks to me, there's a good board for my range and what I'm actually holding, but it could be good for the small blind and the big blind as well. Rather than taking a stab at it as a semi bluff to try and get through three opponents, I check to make sure that I can see a free card. The turn is the six of hearts, giving us the flush but it pairs the board. Small blind bets 35. He can have some strong hands like full houses and flushes in this range, he could also have air. The big blind folds, under the gun folds. Despite knowing that the small blind has strong hands in his range, I raise to 100. I'll still have the best hand fairly often. Maybe I don't here. The small blind re-raises to 300. It's an annoying spot. Perhaps the small blind is at the top of his range, or it's possible he's putting on some type of bluff attempt, since my line looks a bit odd. I didn't bet the flop like I would with a straight set or two pairs, so I'll never have a full house. The opponent could think that I would have bet the flop with a flush draw, and because I didn't, I probably won't have a flush. I'm likely just complicating things, and his re-raise means what it looks like, that he has a monster. People always have it, and I'm trying to reel it in after last night's loss. I'm going to fold this. Okay. Show the, show the bluff. Show the beat. Show the bluff. Dude, please. Show, show the, the bluff. bluff. Show the bluff. King queen. Oh. All right, all right. The opponent shows that he bluffed me with king queen offsuit. He had the king of hearts, so he wasn't drawing dead. It's funny how often I've called in similar situations like this in the past, and I've been wrong. When I thought I've learned my lesson to not pay people off, I'm incorrect when I fold. I run cold again for an extended period of time. I can assure you that nothing interesting happens as my stack dwindles. 
I have to add on for several hundred before moving over to Brian Stafford's table. It always cheers me up to play with him. At 7.15, we've got ace four clubs on the button. Brian raises to 15 from the cutoff. It always cheers me up to three bet him. I make it 50 to go. Brian calls for 35 more. I have no idea what the board is because we check it down and I win with ace high. The fact that I even have to include this in the video is embarrassing for me, but I decide whether or not I'm going to make a vlog of the session before it starts. I'd like to see it that this is going to be the most boring vlog ever so far. <laughs> I promise this video will get a lot more exciting. We've got king queen offsuit under the gun. I raised it 15. Four players call, we're going five ways to the flop. It's queen four deuce with two clubs. We've got top pair and a backdoor flush draw. Small blind checks, I'm going for value with a bet of 50. Middle position opponent folds, the cutoff folds, the button calls, the small blind folds, it's down to heads up, we're out of position. The turn is the five of spades. Something feels off like I could have been getting trapped on the flop. I check, surprisingly, the button checks back. Maybe he's not as strong as I thought. We probably have the best hand here. The river is the 10 of clubs, the flush draw gets there, if I check, I imagine that the button will check back all hands worse than mine, he'll likely only bet queen 10 or better, and I'll feel obligated to call after checking twice for pot control, and I have some decent card removal with the king of clubs. Instead of taking that line, I bet 70 is a blocker bet to potentially get value out of worse hands. If I get raised, I'll just fold. Indeed, I get raised, the opponent makes it 190. I already let go of a relatively strong hand once today and was wrong don't like the idea of doing it again. Still, I stick with my approach to try and play more disciplined. I fold. All right, show the bluff. Show the bluff. No bluff has to. Not only did the hijack have the nuts, my senses were right on the turn. The opponent drilled the gutter ball for the straight before improving on the river. He luckily checked it back, allowing us to save some money. Unfortunately, I don't book a win in the meetup game portion of the day, but we fire up the stream for a super cool new concept. We're doing a tag team cash game in which players can tag in their partners to play the team stack whenever they feel like it, even for mid-hand decisions. Meetup game section is done, lost 880, but now we're doing a tag team stream. So me, Doug, and Andrew on the same team, we'll be playing a lot of other uh, awesome individuals. So there's Ashley, Ebony Kenny, and, uh, and then we got like a blogger team with Rampage, Flexo, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a 2-5 game and it's matched the stack, but it's on stream in Texas, so 2-5 really means at least 2-5-10-20. That's what this hand is when we pick up pocket jiggities in middle position. I raised a 60. J-Stack is in the cutoff with 5-4 of hearts. He wants to get involved in a battle. He calls. The action's on the under-the-gun straddler. He calls with pocket deuces. We're going three ways to the flop. It comes 9-4-3 rainbow. We've got an overpair and have the opponents in bad shape. Under-the-gun checks. I'm always going to be firing on this flop since we don't want to see any overcards come out. I bet 125. J Stack didn't call with baby connectors to fold after flopping a pair. He calls. Under the gun figures deuces can't be good. He folds. It's down to heads up. The turn is another three. We don't see it on camera, but I check for paw control purposes and to gain information. If J Stack checks back, I'll know for sure that I've got the best hand and I can bet big for value on the river. The opponent indeed checks. I'm feeling great because I figure I'm up against a pair of nines. The river is the seven of spades. It's a tiny bit scary since pocket sevens makes a boat and six five makes a straight. Still, I'm sticking with my plan to go for a big value bet. I make it 400. It's an amount that's nearly the size of the pot. I want to make it look like I'm trying to bluff my way to victory with an ace high hand. J Stack is in the tank. Not only is his money on the line, but he's playing with his partner's money as well. He makes the hero call and gets the bad news. Jiggities are good. The check on the river may have made us an extra 400 since it's possible that J-Stack would have folded to a turn bet. We're up 665 right away. That's not a safe amount to be up in this game since it's playing much larger than it's listed as. Shortly after, something spectacular happens. We see Ebony bet 200 with two pair on the turn as Thomas, who works at the lodge, drills a straight. Thomas announces that he's all in to put Ebony in a very difficult spot 663 more for Ebony to call. I wouldn't want to be sitting in her seat right now to make this decision. She doesn't want to be sitting in it either. She taps in Skull Mike so that all the pressure's on him instead. Everyone loves it. This format makes for a lot of interesting situations. Mike now has to get caught up to speed with what he has and the action to see if he can come to the right decision. Ultimately, Mike makes the call and is in rough shape. They opt to run it twice. The first river is another ace, giving Mike and Ebony a full house to at least win half the pot. They're rewarded for their team effort. The whole table's going wild. It's a ton of fun. The second river 
is a deuce to end up chopping the pot, but it's one of my favorite hands that I've seen in a long time. Next we're playing a hand with four straddles on. You can see that it's 2, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, making effective stack sizes very short. The button limps in for 80 with ace 3 suited. His name's Radley. It's a rad name, but it's still one letter less cool than what it could be. The small blind wakes up with pocket kings and a stack of 10 big blinds. He's not going anywhere. He cuts out chips, then raises to 380. Kings is a good hand, but you know what's an even better hand? Kings in position. That's what Rampage has in the big blind. He could jam or call to set the trap. He likes to go for the trap. I'm in trouble because I wake up with pocket nines and the $20 straddle. The biggest stack that has shown interest in this pot so far only has 12 and a half big blinds. The thought goes through my head that Rampage in particular could be strong, but calling and having effective stacks be around one third of the pot seems silly. Folding pocket nines on stream in this situation isn't something that's very appealing either. I jam, not loving it. Radley doesn't like the spot that he's in. He folds. I don't imagine that the other two players are going to fold regardless of what they have, and they're getting a lot to one. Once a two seed asks for a second to recheck his cards and revel in the moment, Pocket King is actually the worst hand that I put him on. He calls, Rampage snap calls, I get caught in the middle. At least my equity is solid given that no one appears to have folded a nine, I'm up against two Pocket Kings. The opponent's equity is actually about 10% higher than what it's listed as. We're gonna need some help. The flop comes Queen 10 Deuce Rainbow, we don't improve. The turn is another 10, we've got one last shot to hit. The river is the Jack of Hearts, I lose my profit back and then some. The opponents basically chop up my money. Rampage started with a little more, so he wins an extra 200. I get beat by a guy wearing my own shirt. By the way, you can pick that one up in the merch store. I've got a link in the description box below. Now I'm down a little for the team, on top of being down for the meetup game, when Skull Mike raises to 40 with King-10 offsuit in the hijack. The button calls with 10-9 of hearts. I'm in the under-the-gun straddle with ace-queen offsuit. I could 3-bet or call. I choose to call in order to close the action. We're going three ways to the flop. It's jack-9-5, all clubs. Everyone has a piece, but it checks through. The turn is the queen of clubs, giving us the ace high flush. It's not very hidden though. I don't think that anyone's gonna bet this behind me. I've gotta pump up the pot myself. I make it 55. It's a small sizing to lure people in. Mike turned the king high straight. Still, he's drawing dead. He did the commentary for the previous night's stream and saw me regularly bluffing. He doesn't believe me and makes the call. Consider Mike lured. The button folds, it's down to heads up. The river is the three of spades, it's a complete blank. I figure Mike either has the king or ten of clubs, or he called me light on the turn because he thinks I've got nothing. I make over a pot size bet of 250, so it'll look like I'm trying to buy it. Andrew's standing behind me to tap in. This is my last hand of the night. If I get called and win, I'll at least have made $100 in profit for the team. Skull Mike consults with his team. They tell him to fold. Mike is still suspicious that I'm trying to pull a fast one. Eventually he calls. We show him that we've got the winner. It's nice to win a little money for myself, but it's even more of a relief for me to not lose any of my teammates' money and finish above the even mark for us collectively. It's Andrew's turn to play for Team Lodge. He's got pocket jiggities with a couple straddles on, then Jesse Sylvia raising to 75 with ace-queen offsuit and multiple people calling. Andrew three bets to 580. There's a pretty large pot that's building up. One by one, all the players fold. Team Lodge takes down a nice pot without having to see a flop. Andrew increases our winnings with his play. It's now on Doug to bring it home. After adding on several thousand in order to match the biggest stack at the table, he jams turn for piles with two pair after calling a three bet preflop with nine five at clubs. Team Lodge is playing great. Radley, who's just one B short of having a popular poker vlog, is in a tough spot with top pair. He doesn't believe Doug has it and calls off his stack. It's a pot over $11,000 in a two five game. The software for the graphics can't properly do math and isn't accurate. Team Lodge's 9-5 can hold, we'll be up a ton, and my portion of the winnings will get me out of the hole from the meetup game session earlier, I'll actually be up a few thousand for the day. We're running it twice, the first river is the 7 of diamonds, we at least have half the pot locked up, how I do for the day is going to come down to this one last card, as long as it's not an ace or queen and doesn't pair the board, we'll have a 5 figure pot going our way. The second river is the 10 of hearts counterfeiting our 2 pair, we chop, maybe the biggest 2-5 pot that I've ever seen. Doug can't believe it. Andrew and I are watching it together. It hurts us to see as well. Doug gets it in great for us, but we can't hold to scoop the pot. With morale low within Team Lodge, we see a couple of suspect calls. Mike bets 150 on the river with the queen high flush and starts celebrating before the hand is even over. Doug can't fold getting 6-1 to one with ace high. He makes the crying call. It's a pot that isn't too large that we lose here, but 
we get into another dicey situation with pocket tens versus pocket kings in a large three bet pot when the $50 straddle was on. We check call 400 on a nine high flop, then an ace comes out on the turn, we check, our opponent checks back, the river is the three of clubs, we check, the opponent recognizes that he'll have the best hand with second pair a lot of the time and value bets for 750. It's not enjoyable to have tens with this run out when you're facing a bet getting four to one. Surely, people can't always have it. Doug makes a crying call again. Only 250 that is his money anyway. We're no good. Team Lodge ends up losing 1100 total. My portion of the loss comes out to 366, so I personally lose 1246 altogether during day two of Monster Meetup week. I basically do 10 times better than how I did during day one. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. There's not a ton to say about the meetup game portion of this video. You know, Rain Cold didn't really get into that many big pots or interesting situations, but uh, the live stream tag team cash game event, that was awesome. That was one of the most fun sessions of poker that I played. Um, and just everybody who was involved just had a, had a really great time. Uh, be sure to check out the Lodge's YouTube channel. I'll have a link down below in the description box. Um, we're gonna be doing a ton more live streams coming up soon. We took down the stream for a little while because uh, uh, we just wanted to make it the, the smoothest and best that we possibly could. And uh, so, so that's gonna be coming back up very shortly. All right, guys, hope you're all doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Good luck at the tables and uh, come out to the Lodge in May for the Lodge Championship Series. That's going to be a blast. I'll see you next time.